Could you imagine your total testosterone went from around 200 all the way up to 680 nanograms per deciliter just by using a pill once a day? Well, in this video, what I'm going to do is look at a very powerful medication known as N-clomiphene citrate, which may be a viable alternative to testosterone replacement therapy. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my name is Lucas, the founder of Boost Your Biology. And if you've been enjoying these videos, please like the video and hit subscribe to stay up to date with the latest and greatest health research. So just imagine a medication that could take you from around 225 nanograms per deciliter all the way up to 687 nanograms per deciliter. Now we can see that here in this diagram, that would be a massive increase in total testosterone and subjectively, a number of men would notice improvements in many of their symptoms, such as an improvement in motivation, energy, recovery, performance in the gym, libido, general sex drive, erection quality. Many of these facets of human health or male health and anatomy would be improved by increasing testosterone levels that dramatically. Um, now, this image is courtesy of Maximus Tribe. So first of all, we need to understand hypogonadism. Now, there are two types of hypogonadism, primary hypogonadism and also secondary hypogonadism. In the primary hypogonadism, the brain is functioning normally, meaning that it's able to successfully send the signals to the testes to produce testosterone, but the testes themselves are dysfunctional and they're failing to actually make sufficient amounts of testosterone. This is also known as primary testicular failure. Now, this is pretty rare compared to the second form of hypogonadism, which is secondary hypogonadism, where the situation is in reverse. A man has normal functioning testicles or testes that should be capable of producing testosterone, but the hypothalamus or the brain and the pituitary are not sending the signal to actually increase testosterone production. So here we're looking at more of a, either an upstream issue or more of a downstream issue, a functional issue with the testes or a brain issue. So here we can understand clomiphene citrate or clomid. Now clomiphene is partly estrogenic and partly anti-estrogenic since each of its two stereoisomers has a diametrically opposed effect on the estrogen receptor. Of clomiphene's two isomers, N-clomiphene is the estrogen antagonist, whereas zooclomiphene is the estrogen agonist. So this is something we need to understand about medications and drugs is that many of these medicines actually have metabolites and isomers that actually you know, make up the actual drug itself. Um, and we can see here that enclomiphene is the estrogen antagonist, whereas zooclomiphene is the estrogen agonist. Now, when men are given clomiphene in an attempt to increase their fertility or clomid for fertility and restart their endocrine systems, they get a dramatic bump in testosterone. They will see an increase in testosterone. However, the issue with clomiphene is that the zooclomiphene isomer has a far longer half-life and continued use of the drug can lead to estrogenic side effects in men as the circulating zooclomiphene far outlasts the N-clomiphene. Now, because of this estrogenic imbalance, clomiphene isn't the solution for most men because it can start to cause some degree of feminizing side effects over time. And it's not uncommon to hear about mood swings and men weeping during movies when on Clomid. Now, however, if only using the anti-estrogenic side with N-clomiphene alone, far greater results have been noted without the emotional roller coaster that comes with just regular clomiphene. So here's a little bit more about understanding uh, clomiphene. We can see zooclomiphene build up in the bloodstream goes up significantly over time at a 25 milligram dosage of clomiphene, uh, just regular clomid, and n-clomiphene stays low over time, does not build up as dramatically. So how does clomiphene actually work? This is a medication that is used to affect fertility and testosterone levels. What we're seeing here is that clomiphene citrate can block the signal to the brain that there's adequate amounts of estrogen in the bloodstream. Now, because one of the ways in which the body actually makes estrogen is through its conversion from testosterone. So testosterone can get converted via aromatase into estrogen. And so clomiphene 
comes in, blocks the signal back to the hypothalamus that there's, and it's basically blocking and faking that there's low levels of estrogen in the blood. And so it really kickstarts the hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis, signaling more testosterone production and even enhancing uh, spermatogenesis. So here immediately we can see that there's not going to be a negative feedback loop as we see with testosterone replacement therapy. If you take testosterone, the body is going to shut down its production. This is a well-known fact. Those that go on testosterone replacement therapy are often on testosterone replacement therapy for life because going on an exogenous hormone like testosterone has a negative feedback loop, which stops your body's own production. This is not the case with n clomiphene citrate and clomiphene. The body does not stop producing its own levels after administration. So if you compare testosterone, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone levels of men taking exogenous TRT to those taking n clomiphene they consistently find that testosterone levels between the groups are about the same. However, the exogenous testosterone group repeatedly shows suppressed luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone levels, whereas the n clomiphene group shows normal LH and FSH levels and improved fertility. So n clomiphene is ticking the boxes so far. We're seeing an increase in testosterone, an increase in fertility, no negative feedback loop. In other words, n clomiphene citrate is increasing testosterone levels without suppressing your natural testosterone productions if you stop taking it. And we can see that here in this particular study. Another study looked at 12 men who had previously been treated with exogenous testosterone and randomized them to receive either testosterone or n clomiphene. And after six months, both groups were no longer hypogonadal with testosterone levels between 500 and 600 nanograms per deciliter on average. Once again, the enclomiphene raised luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, and sperm count, whereas testosterone did not have this effect. So we can see here the study was titled Oral Enclomiphene Citrate Stimulates Endogenous Production of Testosterone and Sperm Counts in Men with Low Testosterone Comparison with Testosterone Gel. Hopefully that gives you an insight into a little bit about enclomiphene so far. If you're looking for more than just enclomiphene or you would prefer not to use TRT or you maybe even prefer not to have to rely on a prescription medication like enclomiphene to max out your testosterone, do consider joining my Limitless Men's Energy Program where we go through various ways in which we can boost energy levels, motivation, confidence across all facets of our life um, so do consider booking a call to join my men's energy program, Limitless, where you'll get myself to actually analyze your blood work and prescribe recommendations and protocols based upon your blood work and your symptoms. So do check out the men's energy program, Limitless, which will be linked down below in the video description. Evidently, we can go back to enclomiphene now, is a very promising drug for men with secondary hypogonadism. Basically, most of the benefits of TRT without any of the major drawbacks. Obviously, there's no injection that's required as well. Now, I do want to share a particular case study. Um, now, this is relevant for those who are actually looking to work with practitioners to actually get enclomiphene prescribed. I do encourage you to check out Merrick Health. That will be linked down below in the video description. Um, we can see this uh, case study on Reddit. At 35, I remembered getting a panel and my testosterone was somewhere around 625 to 650 nanograms per deciliter. I went to Merrick Health and did a complete panel on, uh, in June of this year. Testosterone was 316, free test was 13.35, IGF-1 was uh, 131, and estradiol was 9.9. Although I could go on TRT, his patient care coordinator, Dr. Merrick, decided to have him try 12.5 milligrams of enclomiphene every day and check back in 60 to 70 days. Um, he also started DHEA and pregnenolone slow release. Uh, 25 milligrams to 50 milligrams two weeks after his enclomiphene only regimen. Within the first week of treatment, his energy levels were back to what he remembered being just a few years prior. Sleeping improved and he no longer needed naps. His energy improved so much that he eliminated coffee altogether and still felt great every day. He could not believe the improvement in just one week and thought it was placebo. Fast forward to the present and although my energy is not as high as it was in the first week, it certainly is high and the need to nap is completely diminished. My workouts are incredible and the desire to push harder just feels better. 
I feel far more resilient now and stress doesn't shake me anymore. I am less irritable and far more patient with my friends and myself. The constant mental battle of waking up and working and going on my day is no longer a chore. Hanging out with people again without constant desire to want to go home and sleep is one of the best feelings. No more brain fog and the feeling of having a clear drive. My current blood work at 70 days of 12.5 milligrams of N-clomiphene every day was testosterone at 1,435 nanograms per deciliter, free testosterone at 56.83, IGF-1 at 166, and estradiol at 41.5. This is a typical uh, success story that I see time and time again in men that prioritize their hormones and that they optimize their hormones correctly. This report is very similar to what I hear from the guys that do join my men's energy program, Limitless. They discuss feeling less fatigued, not needing to nap, feeling better drive, more motivation, uh, more inspired by life, more libido, better confidence to speak to girls. Just the list goes on and on and on. And this is something that I see time and time again. And it actually really hits home to me because this is one of my biggest passions is to bring back the spark, invigorate men to feel like they can conquer their day, just wake up feeling motivated, driven, and have a purpose and a mission. This is one of the reasons why I create so much content around male hormonal health, testosterone optimization. It's truly because I I really do care. I really, really, really care about restoring the spark and restoring quality of life in men that are suffering. There are too many men out there suffering from uh, a range of issues related to energy, motivation, hormones, things like that. Um, so this is a just a snippet of you know what I try and deliver here on my channel. Going back to the side effects, and clomiphene does appear to lower the body's production of IGF-1. Now, researchers speculate that this is due to n having anti-estrogenic activity in liver tissue, but the exact me mechanism by which n lowers IGF-1 is actually not clear. Mild side effects such as headache and nausea were observed in less than 4% of patients, and of the one of the 481 subjects who undertook the phase three clinical trial, only 11 were unable to complete the study. Uh, so this information was uh, sourced from Price Plow Blogspot, an incredibly useful blog with great information. As far as dosages are concerned, 6.25 milligrams to 25 milligrams per day is oftentimes prescribed by practitioners. Do be sure to check out Merrick Health, which will be linked down below in the video description. Otherwise, that pretty much wraps up the video on n clomiphene citrate. We can clearly see that this medication has um, a very powerful effect at restoring testosterone levels in uh, secondary hypogonadism. Otherwise, thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.